All right, so we've already covered how to name basic alkanes like butane, methane, propane, and ethane. But what happens when they have extra substituents attached to them? Now remember, it's those substituents that are attached to the original carbon chain that make the molecule reactive. So how, what kind of a name would we give to these molecules? So let me draw a carbon, a carbon molecule for you. <clears throat> okay, so the first step that we want to take when we're trying to name our molecule. Now, see, for example, we might start to say, okay, let's just count across. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that a six carbon molecule, a plain one, would just be hexane. So, but as you can see, this is much more than just a simple hexane, which would look like this. That's what a simple hexane would look like. And obviously this is not like that. So how would IUPAC have us name a molecule such as this one? Well, the first step is to find the longest carbon chain. Now, while we might think that it is hexane straight across six carbons, it actually isn't because you can see that all these extra things that are attached to them, if we take a different path, we actually find a, a basic chain with more than six carbons. So let's say, for example, if we go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, that would be seven carbon, so that's already longer. But if we went instead up this way, it would be seven, eight. So that actually gives us an eight carbon molecule with substituents attached. So I'm going to go ahead and circle those so we remember which, which chain we're using. Okay and then I'm going to use the same color just to kind of number the carbons so that we can uh, remember one, two, but at the same time it's not really going to interfere three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so the first step is to find the longest carbon chain and we've done that. The second step is to number the carbons and we've also done that. Now what's important to remember when you number your carbons is, I started for example here, one, two, three. You can see that there's already things attached at carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. However, if I had started numbering from up here, one, two, three, four, the first substituent that we find attached would be on carbon three. Now, while that might seem all right, IUPAC wants us to number the chain in such a way that the substituents have the lowest number possible. That's why we started over here and went this way. Okay, so now we're going to circle the substituents. We have one here, we have one here, one there, one there, and one there. <clears throat> All right, well, one carbon attached to the chain here and here it's three carbons so remembering what I mentioned in my previous video that we can use you know meth eth pro bu to remember to mean one carbons two carbons three carbons or four <clears throat> I'm going to write it here meth eth pro bu all right, so if meth eth pro bu means one carbons, two carbons, three carbons, or four, then we can use that same technique to name the substituents on these molecules that consist of just carbon. So just like the basic chain is called an alkane, and so therefore the, the name would be methane, ethane with that ending, these substituents that consist of just carbons and hydrogens. Now I haven't drawn all the hydrogens on here just for clarity, but they're actually there. So um, what these would be called is alkyls. 
alkyls. They're called alkyl groups. So the ending YL can just be attached to the prefix that will tell us how many carbons there are, and that's what they're called. So for example, this substituent that only has one carbon would be methyl. So that would be a methyl group. And this carbon that's right here has three, so propyl, that would be a propyl group. However, what's the difference between, let's say, a propyl group, just a normal propyl would actually have three carbons in a row. So one, two, three, one up here like this. One, two, three. It would be attached like that. So, but nonetheless, this still has three carbons. So what would we call one that has such an arrangement? Well, it has a special name, and that's isopropyl. And iso just means that it's, in a, that it's arranged in a, such a way that there's two carbons coming off of it like this. Let's say we had a substituent that looked something like this. And it had a branch of three coming off of it. That would be called neo. So in this case where there's one, there's four carbons, one, two, three, four, that would be a neobutyl group. So anyway, so in this case we have isopropyl. So, and these are all methyl groups as well because they just have one carbons and the ending L, YL for alkyl. So now to name the carbon, the carbon molecule. All right, so the way we do this is we first get the last name of the molecule, which has eight carbons, so it's going to be octane. Octane. Okay, so now what we do is we count how many methyl groups there are, and we see that there's one, two, three, four methyl groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down the numbers of the carbons on which these methyl groups occur. So we have, I'm going to write it down here, so we have two and another one on two, and then so in between numbers you're going to write commas, and in between numbers and words you're going to write dashes, so I'll show you how that is. So we have two, two, and then we have one on the number three, and we have one on the number six, dash. So we have methyl groups, but there's four of them. So we have to use an appropriate prefix. So to let, to let the reader know, whoever's trying to figure out what the molecule looks like from our name, that there's four of them. The prefix for four is tetra. So in this case, we would have tetramethyl. Similarly, if you only had, let's say, just one methyl group, you would just say methyl. If it was two, you would say dimethyl. If it was three, you would say trimethyl. And then, of course, if it's four, you would say tetramethyl. Anyway, and, and so on with the prefixes. So, and also note that I wrote the two twice. You might be wondering, okay, well, why would I write that twice? We already know that it's on carbon two. Well, there's two of them. And if you don't put the extra two, you know, your reader might not know where that fourth methyl group goes. So you have to make sure that if there's two substituents occurring on the same carbon that you write that number twice so you know that, that that's where it is. Okay, so 2236 tetramethyl octane is what we have so far. Um, but when then we also have this group, the isopropyl group. So that's on the number four carbon. So we can write for that one four dash isopropyl. All right. So now we just have to put all of these three names together. And how do we do that? Well, the way IUPAC convention is, is that you alphabetize the, the names. Well, except for the, the last name, the octane or methane or hexane or whatever it is. That's like the last name of the molecule. That will always go at the end. But the substituents are to be alphabetized. So in this case, ISO, I would come before T. So we would write four dash iso propyl dash two comma two comma three comma six dash tetra methyl octane 
and just like that. And so that would be the full IUPAC name of this molecule. Now, just one more thing that I want to throw in here, um, just so you know, is that just like I mentioned that you can have um, an ISO group with two, with a, with a branching of two, and a neo group, oh, I didn't write that over here, neo. So this is ISO, and this would be neo, one, two, three, four, so butyl. That would be a neobutyl. So just like the neo and the iso, we can also have other arrangements, and that would be cyclic arrangements. So a cyclic arrangement, sorry, a cyclic arrangement would look something like this. So let's say we had a three carbons, which would be propane. Well, obviously now we can't have like a, a cycle, a cyclic methyl because there's, you know, it's only one carbon. So there's no way we can make a loop out of that. Out of an ethyl, we couldn't have a cyclic either because it's just like this and there's no way you can you know wrap around to make a cyclic compound that way either but with propyl with three carbons we can um, it would be an arrangement like this and that would be just drawn like a triangle like that so that would be a cyclopropane and then if we had four carbons two three four it would just be like that. That's cyclobutane. Five carbons would look like that. Cyclopentane and then six carbons. Cyclohexane. So, you know, just keep in mind that um, these are also very common in organic chemistry and so let's say for example if we had substituents attached to something like this then the last name would be you know cyclohexane so in this case if we had let's say like a group attached there and another group attached here um, then we would number this let's say this is carbon number one two three we would have you know one comma three dash dimethyl cyclohexane. So that's how you would name something like that. So just keep in mind that that's also very common in organic chemistry. All right, thank you.